Hi, everyone. I'm Paula Blank at Southern New Hampshire University. I see some familiar faces. It's great to be with you. I have the distinct privilege and honor of being with three of our students to talk about competency-based education and their experience. They are all remarkable. We've got to spend a little bit of time together. Sam, well, they'll tell you about, uh, a little bit about themselves to start. But Sam has come to, uh, from Boston to join you. It's his first time in San Diego, so he's going to explore. And Brittany and Mark drove down from Los Angeles. And uh, very good of them to, to, to make the effort to be here today. So let's go right down the line just quickly, a little bit of background, who you are, how you came to our program. Uh, good, good afternoon. My name's Sam Campbell. I'm from Boston. Um, I, I came to this program. I, I, I'm through a program called Duet. Uh, I met the director of Duet, his name is Mike Lawson, through another friend, and I was having a lot of trouble with um, the standard college track. And he said, I have this great program that you can, you know, go check it out. Uh, and basically, it, it was competency-based curriculum. Uh, and once I got there, and I've been there ever since, For I did my associates, and now I'm almost done with my bachelor's. So, and Sam, tell them what you... Uh, what Sam does, where you, what you do and where you do it? Um, I'm an educator. I, I'm a uh, dean of students for an elementary school in Boston, Massachusetts. And um, I work with kids. I've worked with kids all my life. Uh, and I needed to get some credentials behind me. Obviously, when you're working in the educational field, everything is education. So uh, being in the room without it put me at a disadvantage. But now I'm, I've overcome that hurdle. And in your school, what percentage of kids are in free lunch? All of them. So working in really challenging places that need people like Sam. Brittany? Yeah, hello. So I'm Brittany Mercado. Um, I'm a student uh, through the program Southern New Hampshire. I attend Southern New Hampshire through the program Da Vinci Extension, which is a school in Hawthorne, California. Um, and so I am a HR assistant uh, for Belkin International, where I started as an intern through the program um, Da Vinci. Um, yeah. Brittany, you're working and working on your degree. And how close are you? To finishing. So, yes. So, I'm, as uh, Paul said, I'm a student and I'm also working uh, part time. Um, and then I'm almost done. So, I have probably a few months left to earn my bachelor's degree. So, yeah. Great. Mark? Hi. Um, I'm Mark Santizo. I, too, come from uh, Da Vinci Extension, um, doing my Southern New Hampshire University program, uh, studying management in the focus of uh, operations of logistics. Um, I come from Gardena, California. And uh, I'm currently um, unemployed, but I'm looking forward to uh, looking at internships and any job opportunities around. And all of you, you also will be done soon by May. Yes, absolutely. It'll be done very quickly. Um, I only have a goal left. So we we'll graduating very soon. So as you know, the federal uh, the U.S. Department of Education measures uh, completion on a 150% basis. So if you're in a two-year program, they measure your success on a three-year framework. And if you're in a four-year program, it's measured against a six-year framework. I know it doesn't sound sensible, but it's a reflection of the reality. How long will it be from start to finish for you? Uh, three years and maybe three months. Brittany? Around four years. And Mark? Four years relatively. So we have students who are not only working through the competencies, but they're finishing on time or early which also has the, the advantage of getting them into the workforce quicker than their peers, and there are obviously opportunity costs of all of being enrolled. So I want to say a little bit about um, the project. We, so we talk about projects. We'll, uh, you'll also hear goals. We use them interchangeably depending on what version of the program they're in. They're not, you're not in courses, which confuses people. Right. Talk a little bit about the experience of projects and the idea of grading, which we don't have, and the not yet, the concept of not yet. All right, so for, for my program, we do um, projects. Uh, you would get a set of criteria that you need to follow, uh, then you work on your project, uh, and then you submit it. Uh, raters would grade, or not grade, but view your project to see if you've met all the competencies, uh, and if you have, then you can master it. Uh, and if not, they'll send it back with some instructions or some guidance on how you can better uh, make that project uh, make that project better to meet those competencies. And Brittany, when you get not yet, so it's mastery or not yet, you have you have a certain amount of time before you can resubmit. 
Yes. So when we submit the paper, we have uh, 72 hours before we get the feedback back from our grader. Um, and then from there, you know, like I was making the joke with them earlier that I'm once I submit, I'm refreshing the tab over and over to make sure to, you know, check to get if I got my feedback or if I mastered. Um, so once I get the feedback as soon as possible, you can re resubmit on that. Yeah. And, and you guys are saying that to get a clean mastery without a not yet is like winning the lottery. It's That's the goal. Really big. <laughs> it's a really big reward. Yeah. yeah. And can you talk a little bit about um, this question of, so you can go very fast if you know your stuff, but you had some, you all had projects that kind of kicked your butt a little bit. Talk a little bit about the experience of that. And I want to, what I'm really getting at in this question is you're not sliding by. So it's just, give, us, give us a sense of that. No, um, sometimes when I get hit with a three page or four page uh, project, um, I like hesitate to, to see like, oh, where am I gonna start? But um, the criteria and the instructions is all there. I love how the program is set up, just directions, uh, criteria, and then projects, checklists, and I just go down the outline, really. They set it up for you. So when you get, when you get a project back, right, so I want to talk a little bit about this question of the projects that are hard and how you think about, you give me an example at lunch, writing. Talk a little bit about your attitude towards writing as you near the end of your program. Yeah, so when, right, when I get that not yet mastery back or feedback, um, for me, it's more rewarding as I'm getting feedback on my writing skills, right, on my research skills. There's a rubric there that lets me know, okay, this is what's missed on your paper, right? This, this is what you need to improve on. From there, I take on that feedback, go through my research process, get more criteria, more resources there, and build up on that. So what I was explaining to Paul earlier, my research skills have definitely um, God and better as like using outside resources even yeah and for me uh, my writing skills have increased tremendously uh, they'll tell you uh, this project should be 1250 words uh, but that's impossible to incorporate all the details that need that need to be incorporated into the project uh, and your one or two page paper that they're, they're saying this is what it should be usually turns out to be like a 10 page paper, uh, which is what I can do now with my eyes closed. 10 page papers do not bother you. Easy. <laughs> can you say um, a little bit about the question of time, the flexibility of time? You have a very busy job, you're, you're a father, um, but you all have circumstances that sort of, you know, you work, Brittany. Um, could you say a little bit about the importance of being in a program that doesn't tether you to a tight time schedule? And what, how does that play out? Like, just make it real for people who aren't familiar. Um, so the flexibility and the time for me was really essential. Um, in a few months ago, you know, COVID hit, um, life came in play. Um, I was able to kind of stop my work a few months, a few weeks later, pick it up, right? So that's the beautiful, the, uh, for me, it's what I love the most because if I was in a traditional classroom, I wouldn't have been able to drop out of the class, right? I had to continue and just go through it, possibly pass a class with a C, with the, you know, the best that I could do. So for me, the time, the flexibility is amazing. After I clock out from work, just hop on the computer and call it a day. Yeah, um, yeah I just want to piggyback. Accessibility is, is great. Um, I, I used to work when I was employed at UPS. Um, after my shift, again, like she was saying, just pick up my laptop and open it up and start on the project again. So. Uh, and for me, uh, our school never stopped. Uh, we went from in-person to Zoom. Uh, COVID added 10 steps to everything that we were doing in the school. And if I wasn't in a program like Duet, I would have had to drop out uh, because my job was demanding as an administrator. So I was still able to stay in the game. I was still able to go home and, and like, like she said, uh, jump on. I could even do it during some downtime during the day. Uh, and my coaches who were at Duet were very responsive during that time as well. So I'm thankful that I was in this type of program versus the traditional setting. Could you say a little bit about, you alluded to this, um, 
Sam, that you had tried other programs. You tried higher ed, I think one, two, three, five, five <laughs> times, and you found and you found your way. And you've been racing along, you know, faster than typical pace. If you had to sort of explain this program to someone as an alternative, if you saw someone struggling as you did, what would you say about it? Uh, I, nothing but good things to say about it. I would say that it's the type of program, well, the thing that I love the most about it, I'm a perfectionist. Uh, it forces you to master your competency, uh, which to me is like the equivalent of getting an A. Uh, so when you graduate, you graduate with all A's and just that peace in your mind helps to propel you. Uh, it has a lot of visual aids. You have coaches that are there to support you. Uh, it's not like, um, I mean, for me, I've, I've tried the traditional setting, and it seems like you're just a number. Uh, this program sort of, it, it's very close-knit. The communities are very close-knit, and everything is geared towards support. Everything is geared towards support. So you don't really get a chance to fall off uh, because they're right there to catch you, and even to a point where it can even sometimes be aggravating. But that's a good thing, I guess. Could you repeat the question? Sorry. Yeah, the question is if you were trying to explain, I, I often find when I'm trying to explain the program, people's frameworks are the traditional ones they know. So it's very hard to sort of explain to them how this is different and why it works so well for so many students. And I'm curious, what would you argue? What would you say to someone who was skeptical of the program or just struggling to understand it? What was the, the most important thing you'd want them to understand about it? Yeah, um, so I think the most important is, again, failure doesn't exist, I guess, right? Um, you can say, you get that not yet, right? Or that feedback that you're not doing enough on that paper, but what they're actually giving you is more encouragement for you to improve your skills, improve your writing skills, improve your research. So for me, that's what I love to say about this program, and I get questions all the time, like, so what is it that you do? Because you don't go to school, you're on your laptop. Well, I do go to school, I don't go talk to a teacher, but I'm talking to my grader, right? I'm talking to myself even to look at that feedback, go over it, right? And I'm lear learning that lesson myself, yeah. Mark, do you want to add? Yeah, um, if I were to argue, like, tr traditional schooling for me, I, I didn't choose that route because it's a bit anxious to go to school, take a test, and they give you a grade, and that grade labels you, and it messes with your head. It's like a uh, psychology. But with this program, the competency criteria, mastery-based mastery grading is like what I, am, um, I like to work with because it sharpens my skills, especially with writing and researching. So if I love you know, just writing papers <laughs> and researching on that topic. and So many college students say that, I love writing papers. I love writing papers. We hear it all the now, time. Now, yeah, I used to be a, more of a math person. Now I'm, I'm leaning towards research-based ingredient. And thank God for this program. It sharpened and, again, it enhances our skills, yeah. I would say. Uh, two of the three of you happen to be working right now, you full-time, you part-time, Brittany, and soon you mark, because you're finishing soon. But for the two of you that are in the program and working, can you say a little bit about the relevancy of the competencies? And I think, Mark, um, excuse me, Sam, you mentioned, like, learning it today, applying it tomorrow at work. Yes, it, the content that I was learning, I was able to actually take it and apply it immediately. So I was really getting a value out of it that you don't normally get. I think in the traditional settings, they talk a lot about theory. Everything is theory. This is what's going to happen. Uh, whereas this curriculum is, this is what you need to do. Uh, and I was actually going and trying it. And I was finding that it was more successful and more helpful, helpful for me, especially when it came to uh, issues of, I'm in a management program myself, uh, team building or cultural differences or how to navigate through uh, issues, at, uh, you know, at, on your job where um, there were differences that were happening, hostile differences, anything. It was giving you a really large scope of this is what you should do in this type of situation. And it was working.
I need to call this out. It's a really wonderful example. One of the things we often hear for people trying to hand, understand CB is like, well, it's vocational, right? It's like skills like writing or programming. Um, but you just heard what are often called enduring, or some people would say soft skills are actually hard to teach. But managing difference, uh, how you de-escalate de a difficult conversation, like, right? These are all skills that sometimes people don't understand. CB works really well for it. Brittany, do you want to Absolutely. talk? A little, I'm sorry. Do you want to talk a little bit, Brittany, about you know the sort of relevancy of the learning to your work? Yeah. Um, so as you said, content-based, right? I can take that into my HR position. But as an HR person, I'm helping resolve problems, employee problems, and business problems. And this actually comes in hand again with the research. I mean, sorry, with the feedback that's received. Sometimes, depending on our grader, it's not too clear. So I have to go in and kind of critically think of what they want to say, right? What are they trying to say and how am I supposed to imply it in my work, right? So I think definitely it's taught me even just doing the work, right? Using my critical thinking skills, problem solving skills, taking that into the workplace as well, so. So one of the things that's in, uh, to build our program, the one you're involved in, is it's a hybrid program, which means you're getting your learning online, your feedback is coming online, your resources are online, but you all have access to people in a physical location, you can go to that. No set schedule, you sort of access it as you need. Tell me what it provides, like what's the part that you're getting from that versus what you're getting online, and how have you used those resources? You alluded to it in passing, I think, Sam, about sort of supportive people, but talk a little bit about the hybrid version of the program, or the hybrid nature of the program. Um, so the program, right, um, with Da Vinci Extension, we have these uh, cal coaches who are there to help us with support. Like if there's a grader that I don't understand the feedback, I go and ask them for more interpretation or, you know, I'd seek advice, but they're also there for life advice. And I mentioned earlier that, you know, COVID hit and that was able to take a break from schooling from their advice, you know, their life advice. I was able to take a break and kind of acknowledge that myself, I needed to take a break from school and just focus on work and focus on what was there. Um, so that's the piece where we have these counselors and being able to have that hybrid version. Yeah, uh, Brittany framed it well. Um, in Da Vinci Extension, they have these counsel they have counselors and coaches for you to um, talk to, and they will have a one-on-one -on -one session with you, talking about oh, how are how's your how are you doing in, in school? Um, is the feedback that you're receiving um, helpful for you? And if it isn't, we're able to, you know, again, talk how we can, like, break down the instructions and the feedback. And then counseling, if we're, you know, we're feeling a little low or we're feeling like life is beating us up, they have, you know, some inspiration or, uh, you know, um, helpful tips for us to overcome those issues. And on top of what both of them said, uh, it's very close-knit community. Uh, at least at Duet, uh, they provide extracurricular activities for us to do as well. Come on, let's gonna go. We're gonna go bowling. Uh, we're gonna go to if if you're old enough to a bar, and we're gonna have some fun. Or you know, like they just really try to create this community to support you beyond just the academic piece, uh, which is which is helpful because sometimes you want to escape from the work a little bit, and, and they're providing that as well. The coaching is wonderful uh, when you go in. Some of these projects are very challenging. They're, they're very hard. Uh, some people think because it's competency-based, it's easy. It's not easy. Like I said, those two or three page papers that you think you're supposed to turn in turn into 12, 13, 14 page papers. So uh, it could be very challenging. And sometimes you just need that encouragement that you get from the communities that they're building, I'm sure Da Vinci and as well as Duet create on a daily basis. Okay, so we're having this love song towards our CB program. What could we do better? Well, one thing is um, I guess we understand everyone has a busy life, and I'm going to be completely honest. Uh, I think it's with the greater feedback. Sometimes that's just like I want it sooner than later. Um, and then just, I think, the clarity on it. Sometimes, I, like I said, I have to go to my other external teacher and ask, like, would you, can we, how can we decipher this message? I don't understand what this greater is asking for. Uh, but then we communicate that with the greater back and forth. Um, but I think that's what I feel like we can, can be done better. 
That's great. Thank you. Yep. I I just had to emphasize on that, just the expedite the grading process, because, you know, sometimes we're on the, we're, we have momentum, and we just want to master, master, you know, and that, that uh, 72 hours kills, a, kills the momentum, and uh, we just, we hit at a low, and um, I would say what could be done better is, like, you know, um, when they're giving back the feedback, it's more instructive, maybe when it's not, like, bland or just one or two sentences, it should be elaborate, you know. I, I totally agree. 72 hours is brutal. Um, I, w I want my feedback back in an hour, to be honest with you. But I know that's not realistic. Uh, but yes, yeah, shortening that time for the, the feedback. And, and also, in some cases, um, and I know this, these, these programs, this is all new and it's, it's, it's early in, on in the game, but providing more professional development for coaches so that they can individualize their coaching plans for each individual student because you might have somebody like me who works 12 hours a day versus uh, Mark who's looking for employment. So he might have more time on his hands and, and not having so much of a blanket process to the coaching process. Not to say that the coaches aren't great. So I love two things about your answer. One is that you're so eager to get the work and get back in it and finish that work. And the second is that 72 hours from most campuses in America would be extremely fast. <laughs> it's like, you're getting 72 hours, what? <laughs> I know, that's what you're, I can tell my colleagues are like, so just so you know, as frustrating as it is, it's probably like, it's pretty rare. Um, I want to open it up to the audience uh, for questions that you might have for these three stellar students, please. Let me just get the last part of it because you haven't finished yet. So they'll get both a traditional, they'll get a competency-based transcript, and then as part of our approval for the Department of Ed and for our creditor, we have to crosswalk that to a course-based equivalency transcript. They said they transferred in at least some credit, so that, that's on the front end. You have to do that as well, right? Yeah, and our creditor would not... We had to do a, we could only do a block transfer of credits for a long time, so we were disadvantaging someone who had less than two years. So it was, all, it was, it was strange, right? Like, right. if you come in with 30, 60, I can take it all. If you come in with 30, I can't take it. So we finally get a breakthrough on that, and now we're able to take transfer credits wherever they, whatever the number. But now go to the question, which is, how are the, how are the competencies and the areas, the buckets, if you will, structured? And how do you choose, like, your next competency or your next project that you want to tackle. Think back when you're halfway through the program. Yeah, like you were mentioning my, like the, my, I'm taking, my program is uh, manage, my, yeah, what I'm saying is management. They intertwine marketing and leadership really closely together. So if I would say the first competency would focus on leadership. After that, um, brainstorming. And then the last project will be, you know, the, the big picture, yeah. right? So that's how they intertwine with, I'd say, like all the competencies and projects that uh, the professors uh, give us, you know. Yeah, um, and so how to break, what he says, competencies are all tied into a goal, right? So we have a first goal on advertising, and then there's three competencies there. So one would be critical thinking on how to analyze a SWOT analysis. Then the second one would be to create a paper or presentation on speaking on your analysis, kind of building up, right, each one. The third one would be, he said, the final picture. So we would talk about everything we learned from critical thinking to marketing to advertising, putting it all. We get some real world um, problems. So if we have companies, for example, a project that I worked on was there's a startup uh, coffee shop and they want to recruit more people to come and work there. So what do I have to do? Kind of critical think, okay, look at the demographics, look at um, the research there on how many businesses are inside and how can we bring in more people? So a lot of critical thinking comes into here. Not a lot of, we do more research, but most of the time is what we have, to, what I have to come up with from the analysis that is given to me. So, yeah. Well said. Now Sam, 
the relevancy of this uh, sort of was vividly played out for you because you were working at the school. You got halfway through the program, which is the associate's degree, and what happened next? Um, then I went into the bachelor's. But you also got a promotion. Oh, yeah. As soon as <laughs> oh, I... Oh, yeah, that. <laughs> oh, yeah. So when I finished my associates, they promoted me um, with the intent to promote me again once I'm done with this bachelor's degree. Uh, and so I received a lot more responsibility. <laughs> so one of the things we've seen with the competency-based program, which is interesting, is that, and, you know, we our markers of success are obviously things like graduation rates, um, but a lot of our students get bumped and get increases in uh, responsibility, jobs, and wages. And it actually can slow them down. Because all of a sudden you're in a new job, it's like, holy cow, I'm drinking water from a hydrant, I gotta learn all this new stuff. So, but again, no penalty. You dial it back, you can find your footing, and then you start again. Sorry, you had a question. Uh, for for me, it's it's separate. The the feedback that I was getting from the coach, it was, it was specifically for the projects. Um, what I my performance was, I, it I, it wasn't a connection, a direct connection. It, it was connected, but it wasn't a direct correct uh, connection. It wasn't like my job was in alignment with the feedback that I was getting. I was just trying to apply what I was learning in the moment. Let me reframe the question just slightly, and I want to make sure that I don't corrupt the question, which is, you're getting feedback, you're getting mastery. Is that getting echoed at work? Are they saying, so you're being told, hey, you really are sort of mastering the writing. Do you have people at work saying, wow, your writing is, is, is better, your writing is great. Uh, in other words, is there a kind of consistency between what feels like success in the learning and then success with the very same competency in the workplace. Do those align? Um, for me, it did. So I received my batch, um, my associates uh, a year ago. And a year ago, I was an intern at the same company. Um, and so what I did, what they told me were my performance reviews, right, where they told me your critical thinking, your problem solving skills are doing much better. You are taking more action and, you know, instead of asking a lot of questions, you're just doing, right? And that's what I feel like I started doing even with my work, right? I started looking at that feedback, mastering, just doing it, doing what I have to do, right? And so that's what I think that I took from, you know, both of the things, so, yeah. And how many of us would love to have more employees who don't wait to be told what to do, but actually see a problem and jump in and show initiative and apply their critical thinking skills? Mark, did you want to add... Um, um, I, I've never worked at, you know, I'd say a company that really reflects my school to my work, but I can elaborate that me, in my, personally myself, I felt like my writing skills have enhanced. Um, I, I've been told, maybe by siblings, oh, coaches actually, that, uh, you know, I can write a cover letter better, you know, uh, I, I know how to, you know, write a resume proficiently. And a lot of the projects that we do, in, at least in my program, have definitely helped me in that prospect. I can, I can speak to that now. So yes, um, what was noticed immediately was that my management skills had increased uh, tremendously. So I went from a, what they call a CFC, which is like a community field coordinator, and they immediately promoted me to the dean of students. So I was very... And it was a direct connection of what I was learning and what I was applying on the job that they could see actionable steps, self-starting, things like that. Full disclosure, I was hoping that was Me too. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Please. Thinking about it or 
And how to be successful. If you, they said, if, what would you say about how to be successful in this program? If someone starting out, they haven't even done their first project yet. What, would you, what, what sage counsel would you give them? Um, I think the main advice that I would definitely give, and I give to everyone, um, so the current job that I do right now, I'm an intern uh, program coordinator, and the one thing I do and that I take in from this and I will give to anyone is, right, we, since it's mastery-based, we want to get it done as fast as possible because we're like, we can do it, you know, there's no one holding back, but I think what I've learned is, you know, take it slow. Um, if you take it fast, you're never going to learn anything. So I think that's one thing where I've told, you know, just dive in slowly. You don't have to pick it up as quick as possible. That's the beauty of this, right? You can take your time. Um, and that's what I would like to say. Take your time. There's no time for failure either. So, you know, I, I like that question. What advice I would give? So when I was beginning to take in this program, my pace was very slow. I was like a professional. I wanted to master, really, every project. But... Like Rini was saying, it's, it's sometimes helpful just to finish the project and turn it in so that you can receive feedback. And then you, you just piggyback and work off of that. And I think that's what's great about mastery-based grading. It's just you, it's your own pace. And there's no rush. And it's your own, you know, way. So it's okay. great. Uh, I would say uh, read the resources. They're looking for a certain letter words and you know they want to know that you actually went through and 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 read something and and gained something from it take your time utilize your coaches and most of all don't stop one of the things we learned is that if students stop they become at risk so while we love being self-paced you never want to go to non-paced <laughs> so pace is important like keeping engaged so you actually said like you had coaches like gotta keep going sam you gotta keep going it's like no i'm really busy at work i need to pause <laughs> right no that happened to me a couple of times but i i appreciate the fact that they would they would not let me stop uh and that's how i was able to um i finished my associates in seven months uh they were on me like a hawk uh after that they they backed off a little bit while i was doing the bachelor's i was like come on man give me a break <laughs> oh by the way we should we haven't talked about price but Brittany, how much debt will you have when you finish? Zero. Zero. How much debt will you have when you finish? Zero. <laughs> Sam, you're going to have a little bit of debt. Good debt, though. I love good debt. Yeah, you had a question in the back corner. Yep, so I'm going to structurally, just because it's a, it's a design question, we've unbundled those roles. So we have trained faculty, again, our creditor, make sure that they have the right credentials, et cetera, who receive the projects, and they are get, getting those. They have a X amount of turnaround time. And we haven't explained this, but your not yet are not on the competency level. They're on the rubrics. So you might have 10 items on the rubric, and eight of them will be mastery, and two will be the not yet. So you'll get feedback on the two. And that feedback, when it's really great, will be links, and it might be, hey, this is what I think you're doing, or, this is what I think you're, where your misconception is, and then sometimes it perhaps is too brief, um, and you get that back, and then again, within 72 hours, um, you, you can submit. Uh, we don't have instructional faculty. You do go to your coaches when you are really stuck, and those coaches will direct you to resources, et cetera. So coaches for us are typically people who are, we have a lot of former teachers, high school teachers, guidance counselors, um, you know, people helping professions who have made the shift, but maybe you want to say a little bit more about your coaches. Uh, so there are two different campuses. The graders are at Southern New Hampshire, I, I'm, I'm assuming, and the coaches for us are at our Boston campus. So there's been times when I wanted to drive to New Hampshire, like, what's going on? <laughs> I had to break this to him, but some of our graders are in Kigali, Rwanda, so it'd be a hell of a long ride. <laughs> um, yeah, so the coaches for me are at Da Vinci Extension, um, and so these are teachers that are helping everyone out, um, and these teachers, like coaches, teachers, are the same for me. Um, just go to the for advice, um, again, if I need help, extra help with the feedback or just life advice, um, they're there. Mark? Yeah, just signing off of what Brittany says, like the Da Vinci extension, uh, we consult with our uh, coaches and talk about what 
we can work better on feedback or any ad really life advice or academic advice. And then our uh, instructors from Southern New Hampshire is just strictly online, just giving us feedback and receiving our, uh, comp uh, our projects. Just give you a little digression and tell you a really cool part of the program. So we've been using our CB programs in refugee settings in Africa and the Middle East. And uh, we have created a, uh, a sort of contact center assessment center in Kigali with refugees. And Rwanda is one of the few countries that allow refugees a right to work. So it changes their life because we get them out of the camp. And they can bring their families out with them. And they are the most dedicated. And we brought our creditors to see that they said to us, this is as good quality assurance as we've ever seen around assessment. Like, it's, we don't see this on campuses. We audit their feedback. Um, we're in the system all the time, and they are so diligent. So not all of it comes from there, but we've been able to create refugee positions there. Neves, you wanted a question? Can you hear the question, which was about, do the projects really contribute to improved work? Do they sort of seem like they relate directly? I, I would say yes. Um, they, they're not specifically geared towards maybe the school setting, but you can take the, the principles and, and apply them. Uh, pretty much all of the projects that I've uh, been involved in or, or I've mastered, I've taken a principle here or a principle there and applied it. Can I ask, um, we have just a couple of minutes left. I'm gonna sort of open up the aperture. Say a little bit about the importance for you of getting a college degree. Brittany, you and I are first generation college students. We were talking about that. Um, can you just say a little bit of what this means to you from uh, the way you walk through the world? Because it's been very practical and we talk about work and we talk about the quality of design. But those of you who know Dennis Litke, one of my favorite educators, who's doing a lot of work with formerly incarcerated adults now, and he always says, when they enroll in that program, they go from being a former prisoner to a college student. And as soon as you make that switch, you walk through the world differently. And I was wondering if you could talk, maybe not, maybe it's not as dramatic as far as I know uh, with any of you, but could you talk a little bit about what it means to be soon, to be a college graduate? Uh, it means a lot to me. My parents are, you know, they've worked really hard to give me what I have now and, you know, let me attend Da Vinci. Um, and so for me to be the first gen to attend college, I'm walking with confidence, honestly. My public speaking skills, everything, everything for me has improved and I've noticed that in myself. So for me to be the first gen in my home to be going to college and attending college and soon be a graduate, I'm just walking with confidence, honestly. I can see it at work, I can see it here. Even, I think, two years if I was asked to talk in this panel, I'd be like, no, thank you, I'm okay, right? I would definitely turn down the opportunity, um, but, yeah. Mark. <laughs> yeah, round of applause. Um, for me, is like, well, let's find a job first um, and foremost, but also find a better lifestyle um, when you have a degree. For me, it means, you know, it's open for you know, adventure and just to seek out n new opportunities. Um, I come from a family, all my siblings went to school. So for me to be competent, I, I want to be the last one to be graduating for my family. So it's, it will mean a lot to me because they, their hard work paid off and they have pretty good jobs and they're pretty happy of what they have with. And I soon, I hope to find something that I love to do and, and share it with other people that I love. For me, it's personal. Uh, my father was a college professor. He died 20 years ago. Uh, he wanted me to go to college so bad, but I wanted to live and have fun and do what I wanted to do. Uh, but now I'm honoring him through this process, and he's looking down on me from heaven, and I know he's proud. You know, everyone here who works in higher education, however they work in this 
industry do it for the glamour. It's a real sexy kind of industry, as you know. <laughs> a lot of money. <laughs> um, we do it because of, of uh, times like this, where we get to spend time with students who remind us why we do this work. And you have reminded us vividly and make us proud to be engaged with you. So thank you for taking time. I know I speak for everyone here. One of the highlights of our time is this last 40 minutes with you. Sorry, and Brittany. Can I add something? Um, you can. You know, you guys are saying that us, it's really grateful for you guys to hear about students, but one thing is that a lot of the teachers um, really do make an impact on us. And one of the teachers that I see here from my high school, Dr. Uh, Weatherford, Weatherford right? Dr. He's, he re definitely made an impact on the teaching. So I just want to say a big thank you from all the students, right? You guys, educators and educating world really do make an impact on us. So thank you. Join me in a big round of applause.